Hello and good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with a second match today. We love baking facing off against Phalanx team. This is, I believe, a top bracket. Yes, it is. Semi-final. So one of these teams yeah, will be is. moving on to the finals, potentially one game up over the other team. Whoever gets to the finals, it will either be one of these teams or one of the other teams down from that bottom bracket below. Who was it? Eternal Rally taking that match down below. One of these teams will be facing off against them. One of these teams will just move straight to the finals. All said and done, why don't we start taking a look at these bands here, Verb? Yep, so we do see the Kali, the Vulcan, and the Janus being banned out here by Wheel of Bacon. So there's, that's going to be eliminating a good chunk of damage. And finally, Vulcan being banned. Yes, Indeed. it's nice to see that. We also see the Janus also being taken out, so that is a good bit of global presence being taken out, although some global did get, still get through. We see the, the Noir, and we see the Athena did get through. And on top of that, we see Phalanx team opting to get rid of the Four, the Mercury, and the Circuit. So that is going to be a nice amount of damage being taken on the table, and also potentially very snowball jungles if played well, Joan. Yeah, definitely. The Thor, just the gank potential on them is scary as hell. Mercury and Circuit, uh, like you touched on, get if they get ahead, they will be like permanently ahead. You can't stop them. You, you can potentially, but it's very difficult to do so. At least not before they just explode somebody else. It's like, oh, we killed Circuit, but she took out, you know, our AD carry, our mid laner, our jungler, somebody before she got taken out herself. So scary stuff you don't want to have to deal with. Other than that, hmm. I see a few interesting picks as well that got picked up and. Uh, at least one of these teams. Yeah, right now, we are going to be seeing, in terms of Wheel of Bacon, we see the Noir on Aimless. We have Freya on Kick. We have Piber on the Athena. Oritrol on the Chuck. And finally, we have Nod on the Hun Bats. So, a couple of people managed to get through, but the a couple of interesting picks, well, one interesting pick coming through here on the Phalanx team, Joden. I said the, uh... The Freya AD carry, something we've been seeing a little bit yeah. lately. I mean, but... it's, it's becoming a little bit more common, but it's still somewhat unconventional, although you're starting to see it more and more because people... Freya's turn from that Raffle Stop jungler we all know and love because of the ultimate nerf. She can't gank out of the jungle ridiculously well. People rely on her more as sort of the stay in lane, lock on target, start firing repeatedly. Indeed. It's, um, it's also surprising she just got nerfed like a week or so ago, and then everyone's like, oh yeah, she's very strong, we should ban her now. Even though she just got nerfed anyway, it's like, weird. It's like, it, 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 the nerf alerted people to her potential to be overpowered, so it's like, yeah, we should ban her, she's good. And occasionally she still slips through. The real issue she has is the fact that she doesn't have the good armor penetration. She doesn't do quite so much to turrets as a uh, more traditional hunter would when it comes down to taking the towers, phoenixes later on as well. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there, but she's pretty good in the laning phase, especially if she gets that haste and fatalis online. Early. That is true. But, but uh, right side of the t of your spectator UI in the red trunks, defend that Titan of Chaos, we do have Phalanx team. We have MV Terra on the AD carry ROM, Marcel's in the mid lane as Jean Kui, uh, Yurling in the support role playing Geb, Zaunk in the jungle as Tyr, and finally Syphos in the soul lane as Ra. If you want to get this replay going, Joden, we can Indeed. get into a little depth in terms of the matchup. So, we're seeing a good amount of sustain coming out on the Phalanx. We're seeing Zyphos on the Ra. We see Zonk on the Tier. Tier did get changed recently. So, he does have the heal. I mean, it's the potential heal is nerfed slightly, but realistically, in a solo lane environment or a jungle environment, even, getting a double heal off a single target is huge. Yep. And then, on top of that, they've got John Kui, who could heal up fairly well, but on the flip side, Wheel of Bacon has Freya, who naturally has Lifesteal off the Burgersman Necklace. Then we've got Uri Troll on Chuck, who's got Ring Dance. So, once again, a good bit of sustain coming out here. We're noticing here a bit more, Joden. Uh, we were just talking about this, I think. A lot. It seems to be that Latin America does favor that sustain style just a smidge more. Yep, yeah, we're seeing a lot of healing come out. I'll be very curious this time around if we actually see more anti-healing or not. We saw a Ra Sylvanas, and while they, the team itself wasn't necessarily doing the best, 
They didn't necessarily. Uh, what am I trying to say? They didn't necessarily need the weakening curse in the end. They didn't pick it up. They didn't exactly need it. This time around, it might go a bit differently. Yorling is a bit better at setting up plays potentially. He has the shield, can protect someone in the middle of a fight with the Gab sh Stone Shield. The Cataclysm has the same sort of initiation effect, potential as a Wrath of Terra. And then Shockwave provides a bit more, I think, in the way of mid team fight disruption. Yeah, right now both teams are gonna be going for the standard build, no really, nothing really too shenanigans at all, and no anti healing coming out early either. Which makes sense, a lot of the healing coming out from uh, a, pretty much all of these gods isn't massive early heals, not like Aphrodite or something like that. But with that, a little bit of aggression coming out here in the duo lane for Wheel of Bacon, while Wheel of Bacon's soul lane has got to lane significantly faster than Phalanx seen. That was a bit of a blunder. Yeah. That's going to force them to lose a lot of minions, but over in the duo lane, Erwiling might die here, Joden. Yeah, very low. I'll just above 100 health. He has potions ticking. His health is going to be restoring, but you want to keep those potions in hand as long as possible. He actually only has the multi-pots as well, so it's a little bit slower on the regen. He has total... Oh, I don't know. He has the extra wards that could be beneficial going forward, but again, looking for the taunt on Envy Terra does find it. Shockwave to answer. There's some minions here hidden back, but so far some pretty good early damage coming out of Wheel of Bacon, and they uh, perhaps aggressed a little too much with those minions there. They took a lot of poke back. Yeah, that is something you want to be careful of early on with the aggression in the solo and duo to an extent, because yes, you can get the, uh, them early pushed in, but, uh, but early in the game, you don't have the potency to keep them under tower for too long, and with your minions getting taken out that quick. So you do have to be somewhat more composed, but we're going to be seeing over in the mid lane, both junglers and mids going to grab the respective camps. Rubber, red buff being taken on the chaos side, while Order are taking their pristine. Oh, sorry, yeah, pristine are going to be taking their speed buff. And at least for now, we might be seeing a possible flank by gank by Zook here. He does have blink. Let's see if he can go for the blink fearless Shodan. Yep, he's gonna look for it. Will he get it? As the minimap doesn't cooperate, blink connects as the fearless into the wall as well. Oh. One more hit. We'll find it. Manby Terra gonna be picking up first oh. blood. They could look for PBR as well. He's sticking around. Fear no evil though coming in from Nan. There's not really anyone here for damage. Look for MB Terra. No taunt available. Preemptive strike. Not gonna provide enough damage to get that kill. Not, neither is that fire shards coming down from that mid lane. So good gank there coming in by Zaunk. Finding that first blood for the AD carry, nevertheless. Yeah, we are going to be seeing a nice use of the rain fire. Will allow just enough damage to come online to allow Mivterra to grab it. And as a hunter, that is exactly what you want. The fact that you want to grab the a, a target who is vulnerable, you can also grab someone who is potentially going to give you a good first blood. And on top of that, as a hunter yourself, grabbing first blood gives you just enough farm early on to get things like Devo Gloves or whatever you're rushing first online just that little bit quicker than the enemy. And in duo lane, that is so important right now. Yeah, definitely. If... Uh... How much gold is in hand currently? He's just 50 gold short of finishing up those Varus Gauntlets. I imagine this next wave of minions, he's going to go back to base. Freya cannot currently afford the Hasten Fatality. If she's about 500 gold short right there, just at that first blood, it's a pretty huge advantage. Yeah, we are going to be seeing. Speaking of golden XP, things are. Actually, gank coming oh. in the dual lane once oh. again. Zamp going in with the Lawbringer. Fear, fearless, rather. And looking for the kill onto Kek. There's a shockwave as well. He's running for his life. No reinforcements even remotely close. Defender of Olympus, possibly from Athena. There it is coming out finally. Looks like Kek might be getting out here free, for, safely, rather. But there's there's the blink coming out. They're still going to look for this. Not going to find a fearless on oh. the back of that. Valk's discretion was forced out. So good response there by uh, Kek, but that's going to be down for the remainder of this little, uh, for, not remainder, but for the next little bit in this laning phase still. Yeah, with that they will not be able to grab that kill. Once one thing with Freya, the speed during the ultimate wasn't nerfed, so you can still use it as a pretty decent escape. And it looks like Athena going to be trying to punish MV Terra for lazy backing here. It's going to waste his time a little bit more. He's out of mana, so he really can't go for. Any kind of shenanigans, his blue buff is going to be coming up soon because Yueling is returning to lane. But over in the solo lane and duo lane, a lot of rotations coming out here. We see that Nuwa gets a little help there by Humbats, while Tyr and Ra are going to be going back. And at least in Solo Island right now, things seem to be fairly even. 
nothing really too big's happened, but that's mainly because both Chuck and Ra have very high sustain, and Chuck is building the Emerald Talisman to block out Ra's damage here, Jordan. Yeah, uh, Ra... Basically, unless Chuck just decides he has to go take a leak or something, runs AFK for two minutes, Ra really cannot kill him right now. On the flip side, unless Syphos does pretty much the same thing, Chuck, having gone for that Emerald Talisman, can't kill... Uh... Ra can't kill Chuck either. They can't kill each other, essentially, I'm saying. I'm getting the names mixed up going back and forth there. So it's kind of a stalemate. It's going to be Soul Lane Island over there for quite a while. That said, a good gank by the jungler. A good amount of burst. The fact that you can heal over time with Rain Dance or Solar Blessing doesn't help you too much if you're killed off in a second or two. So I'll be curious if yeah. the junglers start to show a little presence there as we move forward a little more into this game. It looks like we're going to be seeing the early Fatalis Rush coming out of Kek here, so he wants to stick to a target and keep going. I'm surprised that we're not seeing maybe some boots coming out. I mean, Fatalis is okay as a start. It gives you a good base to work off of, but your damage does get slightly compromised at least until you can get the boots online, and that early timing window you can exploit as an enemy, especially someone like Envy Terra who is higher farmed than Kek. Yeah. Oh. The ideal thing with the Haste and Fatalis is you use Pulse to slow them down, close into melee range, pop a Radiate, and then start oh. hitting off the damage. Oh, there's a Fear No Evil coming out here, Verb. In comes Nan, he's gonna drop that on three members of Phalanx team. Love Bomb, look if he's in this. In comes the Astro Barrage, Fear No Evil, plus on top of the... Recall Demons, is that going to be a dead? No, Kek coming in from the side with the Valkyrie's discretion to the bull pick up the tier. Marks picks up the Athena. Oratrol picks up Marcel's as Geb was also taken out. That's going to be a three for one trade. Wheel of Bacon going on a rampage there. And right side Harpies will get picked up though by Syphos. And they're not going to be able to see that. But look at the ward coverage right now on, these, on the map. Just coming out from all these players. Oh yeah, wow. It's currently yeah. six sitting on the map from We Love Bacon. Actually, is that a sentry ward they have down also? Yeah, that's a... So six yeah. wards, seven wards total for We Love Bacon. They want to know where everyone is at all times. A little less on... Actually, no, not a little less. There's six as well for Phalanx team. So lots of wards coming out already. They want... Everyone wants to know where everybody is at all times. You have strong ganks coming out of Zauk. You have strong ganks coming out of the Hunbats being played by Noun. So uh, you want to keep tabs on these guys to avoid those unfortunate little mishaps if they happen to get, find their way behind you. Yeah. And for now, at least, the fight's going to be tapering off if everyone's going back to base. Everyone's going to go buy items. Speaking of items, let's have a gander at them. We can see that Xyphos opting to use Soul Reliquary as a sort of a foe starter item instead. Instead of going for, like, say, a tiny trinket you'd see on a mid laner because he already has inbuilt, the inbuilt sustain on Ra. And they're going to finish up those shoes with the Magi, so he's going to be pumping out a lot of damage. And has enough pen to at least make Chalk feel it. Ori Troll does have the Emerald Talisman online. So he hasn't got Stone of Guy quite yet, but looks like Combat coming in for a little bit of assistance. Will push Cyphos on the tower. Uh-oh, Zonk has spelled it. He's coming in for the assist. Combat is not grabbing his blue buff because it is not up yet. But for now... Solar lane's going to be fairly passive until the first tower goes down here, and at this rate, Xyphos is going to have free reign, because Oriole's Troll's Tower is taking a lot of damage purely from the raw push. Yeah, it's suddenly difficult to deal with. That's... He just heals his minions up in the middle of that wave clear, and it's uh, pretty rough, because every single time he does it, he, yeah, you might be able to clear the wave quickly as soon as it drops, but every single time he can get a couple hits in. If you know Evil Command is looking for that attack buff, Steel does find it. Good play by him. Defender Lips coming in. They could look for more verb. Yep, down comes the Athena with the use of Defender of Olympus. Going to be forcing it. Oh, in comes Stormcall. In comes Cataclysm. There it is coming in for you. And up goes Noir in the Fire Shards. Will hit Zonk for a good amount of damage, but will actually end up killing him. And with that, no real kill is going to be made. I don't believe anyone was killed. Nope. And with that, that fight is just kind of... And that seems to be a bit of a theme today, actually. It seems to be a lot of teams are trying to can't seem to finish they could start they can get a fight going a lot of really nice initiations coming out from a lot of these teams they, they've got that on point but these fights aren't ending full stop they seem to like to, to drag on a little bit yeah. if you know what i mean 
Yeah, there's not a lot just... of decisive victories. They're kind of like initial burst comes out and then it's like pull back a little bit, go back and forth. Healing comes out from various people on the team. They kind of re-engage a little bit and then it's like, yeah, we don't really want to re-engage after all. Let's just go ahead and back off and everyone just kind yeah. of goes about their own business again. The rights at Harpies get it coming up, going to get picked up very quickly by Phalanx team. And it looks like uh, the left side Harpies were picked up quickly as well there by Nuwa. So I believe that was a one for one overall. Yep. And with that, though, looking at a potential gank here onto Heck, in comes Geb with the rollout, will not find enough distance to go for the shot wave. And that for that, that is just going to allow him to walk away at least for now. Although, let's take a look at some of these builds a little bit more in depth because it looks like Aura Troll going for a very unique build. He's gone with opting to not build boots. Keep Death's Toll as it is, Emerald Talisman as it is, and is building towards what I'd imagine is going to be a Kinzai here, Joden. Hmm. That's a def that's definitely a different pickup. I believe he's looking for that just given the fact that Jean Kui and Gab are going to be having a lot of health. Mid lane, Marcel actually taking a little damage from Aimless. Cooldowns are on. Oh, no, Shining Metal not going to connect in time. Uh, Marcel so able to get away from that one. Geb gonna zone out the new off from any shenanigans trying to clean that one up. So the kin size is potentially on Chuck. Jean Kui is gonna have a bunch of health. Geb is gonna have a bunch of health. Tyr could potentially have a bunch of health. And Ra, he has the Book of Thoth now. He will likely end up picking up an Ethereal Staff or Warlock Sash as well coming up next. So a lot of people in Phalanx team gonna be building health. And when people build health, you want that kin size for the passive. Yeah. We are going to be, uh, in terms of the Keensai passive, Keensai is no longer that super duper must grab item, but it's not necessarily a niche pick as Soul Reaver is now. It's still a nice item to get on a warrior or a hunter, purely because, uh, not a hunter, a warrior or an assassin, purely because it provides the attack speed, it provides power, and then a passive, which is essentially a second source, a second, it's always nice to see a second damage number, so that's never a bad thing, but also, a lot of tanks these days, just purely how they're built as gods, have a lot of high health scaling. Oh, Taunt connects oh, the they could look for aggression. Fear we have come down as well. Zalk gonna miss the Fearless. He could look for blood here, but it looks like Zalk and Marcel's both gonna make it back into the tower. Four man rotation coming out of Wheel of Bacon, not paying off this time. Your middle hmm. under but you're talking about the kin oh size. Yeah. Even on a hunter, who generally are the least lowest health uh, gods, at level 20, they're still they still have about 17 to 1800 health. That's still 65 to 70 additional damage that you're going to be doing every single auto attack. So it's worth it even against them most of the time. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Bacon will get the gold fury though. Flight has begun. Cataclysm going to get popped there onto three members of Wheel of Bacon. Searing Pain and the Lawbringer from Phalanx will pick up Pi Bear. But in, are we going to be seeing a potential Valkyrie's discretion from Kek? I mean, if he can get some damage in, but Oratrol in a very bad spot here. Zoku's going to pick him up for the unofficial double kill. Nuwa goes up in the fire stars for a little bit of damage, but not really going to do too much. Right now, Nuwa's ult. Until you get Seer Rodder to Hoody online, it's just for vision, really. Like, look, if you look at the damage, it does flat. And also it's scaling. It's nothing too dramatic. It's more for that heat, that brilliant brilliant side effect of getting visibility. Yeah, the visibility... See if anyone's going for a gank. The oh. visibility, I think, is the thing people tend to underestimate. Yeah, a little bit of damage is nice, but when you're using it to set up a play, potentially, it's like, okay, we don't know where the jungler is, we want to go ahead and, uh... Steal a buff. Steal a buff, or just gank a land something. You want to see where they are. Okay, can we do this safely? Okay, the jungler's the other side of the map. Go. We have... They're not going to get here in time, we have time to gank. Let's do this. The damage is nice, you might force an Aegis or so or two, potentially, but it's generally negligible if you make good use of the vision aspect of it. Although it can be used for finishes at the end of fights. True. Let's not call attention yeah. to ourselves. We are gonna be seeing a potential gank on the left side. Ewerling has returned from his various warding duties. And both teams are still keeping up in the warding. If we have a look at the graph, we can see both sports keeping up neck and neck. But we love Bacon have put on the superior ward numbers compared to Phalanx. 
And at least for now, that's causing this game to be somewhat passive-ish. There's only been a couple of kills per team at 14 minutes into the game. Well, Fury admittedly has been taken in favor of... Uh, uh, Grath, work with me. There we go. In favor of We Love Bacon. And uh, on top of that, the Golden XP is relatively equal as well. It's basically equal, actually. Only 9 XP. Literally. 9 in favor of Bacon now. It's 365. It is wave right. for wave, pound for pound. What do you think either of these teams have to do to break this stalemate, Joden? Hmm. We do have the Gold Fury coming back up in 2 minutes 30 seconds. Fighting over those objectives tends to be pretty important. Mid Harpies at this point, they start to be worth a little bit less. It's not necessarily worth losing members of your team over at this point. Early on, yes, it's a nice chunk of experience, it's a nice chunk of gold. At this point in the game, it's like, yeah, if we can get them, great. We're not going to have a full 5-on-5 five five team fight over 100 gold anymore. Hmm. That said, with the, the vision, though, these teams could be looking to catch people out in the jungle, but... Both teams have tons of vision, so it's going to be really, really difficult to catch somebody out. <laughs> it's the race to the Sentry Wards. Who will get it first? Find out on the next episode. But no, uh, the Sentry Wards are going to start coming out in force here. Aimless has got a Sentry Ward in the bank. Sentry Wards are going to be coming down soon from the supports as well, as pots become a little less relevant, because the tanking has stopped to come online. And we are going to be seeing a rotation here by Aura Troll, might be looking for... Actually, was that a war popped into speed camp? Yes, it was! He put a ward into speed camp, Joden! He might look to steal that one away here shortly. It's about 45 seconds to a minute or so before that's back online. We'll see if they go for that. Left side harpies, I believe, were secured safely, or successfully, excuse me, by yep. We Love Bacon. They could look for the right side now as well. Roz rotating over that direction. They might actually look to fight this after I made a whole big deal about how they wouldn't appear. No, even though going to find Zhao, he's going to be running away the wrong direction. Shield from Gab going to remove that crouch home now. Yearling caught out in the mid lane. Cataclysm going to find two. Searing pan across the wall, only onto Pie Bear. He's not going to take a lot from that. He is tanky-ish as the Guardian. That said, or Troll, I believe, picking up those right side harpies. Graph, hard to tell. It's only a little tiny bump. But nevertheless, yep. not a ton of gold at this point. Once again, little skirmishes, attempt the kills, but in the end, a bit of a wash again. So, right now, we're going to be seeing... Oh, never mind, more fighting coming out. Nice use of the somersault by Nan. Going to evade over the incoming tier blink. And tears. <laughs> He's an interesting beast when it comes to Conquest because his main use as a jungler is Surprise. And at least in this game, there's so many wards, the element of Surprise is really hard to attain. Having to sit inside of the actual party pit, the camp pits themselves, like inside the ovals, so the wards don't see them in there, but at the same time you don't have enough real free range to blink in from say an alleyway where you'd want to blink in. But ideal positioning, but at the same time, you're being watched, which will essentially override the point. Mm -hmm. So Zonk is not having the best of times here, purely because of the ward presence, Joden. Yeah, I was on, touched on a little earlier as well. The wards are great. You can see everyone, but everyone else can see you as well, because the other team is placing wards. Right now, it looks like the We Love Bacon looking for a bit of a Gold Fury attempt. It's down below half rate. It's about to hit the threshold. Fear New Evil coming out as well as a Shockwave, but it looks like it's going to oh. go the way of We Love Bacon. Recall Demons out now from Jean Quido. In that comes the Astral Barrage. In comes the Lord Bringer as well by Tia. Demons do a little bit of damage, but no one's going to die. But Nan is very low. He has to be careful. If he lazy backs and gets caught, he is dead. We Love Bacon are going to be relinquishing that blue buff there to Phalanx team. Gold buff, Gold Fury was also taken by We Love Bacon though in response. So the Golden XP lead is still is now in their favor, although it's starting to drop down rapidly here. Both of these teams are very even, but in the duo lane, Keck picks up Yueling with the help of his teammates. Oh my. Ooh. That was a quick kill. I guess he stuck around a little too long in that lane, got caught out by the three man rotation. Hmm. So take a look at that gold XP Raptor and that missed that one myself. But uh, middle lane, Stormcall coming down from Shock, gonna find Marcels. There's the Athena preemptive strike and they're looking for the damage. Taunt not gonna need the Amos picking that kill up beforehand. They could look to take this mid lane tower now, and it looks like they will go for it. It's low. The Clay Soldiers from Nuwa gonna tank up some of that damage. Gonna switch to Athena afterwards, but looks like Fearless gonna miss onto Hun Bats. They could, yeah, he's gonna be quite on a good taunt coming in. Fear no evil just in case. Pie Bear, Pie Bear picking that one up. That's a tower and a kill going the way of We Love Bacon. Fire Shards going up, not quite going to find a kill there. 
Was there anyone low? No, I guess I was just a security. No, not really. Oh no, Q Q Q had it. Yeah, someone in the left lane. Freya picking the kill off the MB Terra. <laughs> what we call him Kek. I believe is what we decided yes. to call him. Name numbers and letters yeah, and makes these names even more confusing. All that leak speak though. Yeah. Reminds me of my cop days. But right now we are gonna be seeing Freya doing a nice job of split pushing. Kek has been in lane for a good amount of time, which has meant Kek's been able to get a nice amount of farm. Look at the minions killed. We can see that Kek is top of Wheel of Bacon in terms of minion farm, only second to jean Gui and Ra, two of the best lane pushers in the game. And over in the solo lane, though, it looks like Ori Charles not having a good time because he's up against a Ra. He, you're, it's really hard to outpush a Ra as a warrior. There's not a lot of people that can do it. And you have to get the advantage immediately to even attempt it. Yeah. So, Ori Charles just been having to hold on until no mid game, where his big AoE fight bully presence comes into play, Jotun. Yeah, and you were touching on the minion kills too. Ra is currently up. 3540 minions over Chuck. That's pretty significant, all said and done. And uh, we'll see if that uh, affects things later on level wise. It's only a level experience difference, so I think it might just be that Chuck hasn't really had the opportunity to get proper last hits in. Yeah. And we touched on the whole kin size versus health building thing. Ra didn't end up going with Warlock Sash. She actually picked up the Rod of the Sleepiest for a little bit of extra healing. Yeah, with that run of a Cephlius, they're gonna be... Cephlius, C+, plus, it, it, oh, that's one of the weird items in spite that no one can seem to pronounce. Just, run of the ice cream seems to work at this point. The run of a Cephlius, it's really nice, has a lot of really useful stats for Ra, synergizes with the movement speed, it gives them health, the huge magical power buff of 75. That's the same as a Chronos Pendant. Yep. And on top of that, it gives you the healing bonus, so com that allows not only him to get more healing, we, it allows Ram to get more lifesteal, it allows jean Gui to get more healing and lifesteal, and it allows Tia to get more healing as well. So overall, it is an extremely gold efficient item, but looks like Wheeler Bacon might be sieging at this uh, tier 1 solo lane tower zone. There's a couple guys from Fallon's team heading over that way, though. They're not going to be there in time to save it. There was a curse just deployed by Chuck. They could look for potential Athena, looking perhaps to go to defend Olympus, but looks like they're just going to pull back off of that one. Hmm... Attack speed buff is up. Hunbat's hanging around that area. Could be looking to bait this out potentially. Sacred Monkey gonna... Yeah, he's gonna be going for that one while the middle of the lane, or the middle of the fight sort of not really breaking out in the slightest. I yeah. like the use of the Rain Dance Thunder Strike to just put a big slow field down so they really can't get through and engage quickly. Yeah, but all this time though, while this little dance is going on, Kek is split pushing his heart out. Looks like though, in comes the Cataclysm by Geb is gonna force out a... No beads actually get forced out there. In comes Zyphos, trying to use Celestial Beam, will not find a kill. Kek's going after Miss Materia, he's going one on one. Kek getting body blocked by minions though, but now the minions are out of the way. Oh, never mind. Minions are back in the way. That's the thing with Freya. Minions really muck you over. And we're seeing this. Kek is now going to get hit with Defender of Olympus. My terror going to be forced to retreat. But Zonk coming in for the issue. There's the blink. It's hit with the... Oh, beautiful Athena play. Hits Zonk as he blinks in. Gets the torn. Warbringer is not going to find. Pyrobear gets killed. But beautiful snipe by Xyphos. Picks up Kek. Wow. The rotations there were so yeah. quick. Freya went a little too aggressive. It's something you have to watch out on her. You have the ability to hit enemy gods through minion waves if you don't double stack the Irradiate in the Pulse. Irradiate will cancel the AoE effect off of Pulse, which if they're behind minions, you want that AoE effect so you actually do damage to them. So you wait for the minions to die from just the Pulse, and then you can pop the Irradiate as well. And with the Haste and Fatalis, you have the ability to stay in melee range once you get there as well. So it's like you, you don't have to rely on the Pulse and Irradiate at the same time necessarily. That said, yeah, that tower was also real damn low. She just she could have just taken that and, and gone away. Uh, they probably a little too aggressive there, looking for blood. Hmm. And for now, with the teams stalemating, looking for a gold fury or a fire giant, most likely going to be a gold fury coming up next. Although, if either team gets a good trade, like a DSI or a quad, fire giant will definitely be on the cards at 23 minutes into the game. Golden XP is way up in Wheel of Bacon's favor. It is 8.3k XP, 6.6k gold. That gold advantage is going to become to start, is going to start to become telling as the further and further we get into the game, because the build to Wheel of Bacon are building into their fourth items across the board, or fifth items across the board, while Phalanx team have only just finished their fourths. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a little significant going forward as well. Uh, some key items have come online. People who touched the kin size earlier on Chuck. He's gonna be able to do a lot of damage despite having built reasonably conservative as far as uh, offensive items go prior to that. Banecroft's talent on Freya, that's going to be a lot of life steal, a lot of extra damage as she begins to get her health reduced. So maybe have some aggression coming out in this right side jungle, perhaps Chalk a little bit forward here, caught out by the Fearless, he's gonna get the Defender of Olympus coming in, I'm now looking to counter engage, there's the Defender of Olympus coming down, they might just be looking to get Chalk out of there. Yeah, yeah. Operation Rescue Chalk. Yeah, it could, Get to the Chalk, huh? Uh, I shot yeah. down. Get to the chucker? Yeah, he, he got out. He got to the chucker. chucker. Got out of there. Yeah, he got to the chucker. Well, like, that is a thing with a Athena plus Nuwa that you can do very well is say, okay, Nuwa, go up, give us vision. Okay, I'm Athena. I know exactly where I want to go and teleport there accordingly. Mm -hmm. Combine that with the ward vision coming out from We Love Bacon. High Bear essentially has... The equivalent of the slight NSA within just cameras everywhere. He knows exactly where he wants to go at any time, and fire the fire giant. giant is going to be deemed necessary here by Wheel of Bacon. And Phalanx team does not see it. They are not. Aware. They know this now. They see the lava just popped up, but Wheel of Bacon just ninjaed a fire giant for free. Oh. Non getting a kill on the Cyphos as well in the back of that one. And fear no evil now onto Zalk as well in the back. He's has the Lawbringer potential to get out. Not gonna channel that one up in time. That's a second kill going to Phalanx Team Earth. We love Bacon right now. They're looking for that right lane tower. Meanwhile, mid lane, Keck looking for some good damage onto Jean Kui and is finding it. He's Frank is behind the tower, attacking Jean Kui, winning quite handedly, and now finally joining up a team as they look for this right lane Phoenix. Yeah, this, because they have the 25% structure damage buff off the Fire Giant, this Phoenix will fall post-haste. There we go, it's going to go down quickly. The uh, Astro Barrage coming out there from Ram will only do a little bit of damage there. Nice use of the manage there to delay the Geb. Bear in mind, ladies and gents, now that in the upcoming patch, Freya will have her banish nerfed slightly. Uh, essentially, gravity is being slightly increased on it, so you drop down quicker from banish. And that's going to be something for Freya players to bear in mind. I believe also, is she having some of her scaling reduced on pops? No, just I the, believe so. I can... They, the patch notes didn't have it. Um, I believe it... I believe so. I can double check that. Yeah. I can double check that. While, we, while I double check that, talk us through what's happening right now. So right now, we love Bacon on the back of that nice ninja, super stealthy fire giant pickup. All those early game wards we were so complimented of... A complimentive... We gave so many compliments to both. I, these words are just not wanting to work. My brain is done. <laughs> I woke up early today to get this underway, this whole thing set up and running, and my brain is still asleep. <laughs> not supposed to be awake yet. Well, maybe not awake now, but Episode. not awake when I got up. Nevertheless, all that early game vision meant absolutely nothing. They just sheer luck. There was no sentry wards even placed. They decided, you know what? Let's try a fire giant. There's really not a lot going on. Worst case, we just run away. Nothing comes of it. They went to fire giant. No one came to Fire Giant, they took the Fire Giant. They took a tower, yeah. took a Phoenix, took another tower, and took a Gold Fury now. That's a pretty huge jump in gold right there. The past, like, three minutes, they've found themselves, like, four or five thousand gold so far. They still have about a minute and a half remaining on the Fire Giant buff timer as well. They could look for even more here. As they're kind of split up at the moment. I imagine they're going to look to siege down that left lane Phoenix, because that's the one you want Fire Minions pushing down when the next Fire Giant rolls around. Hmm. Breaking news coming in from the patch notes, Verbalosti talking out of his rectum. Freya did not get a scaling reduction only with the banish. But looks like Wheel of Bacon gonna be looking for the, the harasser onto Nan via Zonk. Gonna be able to heal up nicely. In it comes the fire shots revealing them. In comes Fino Evil. Beads being popped there by Zhong Kui. Oh, this is it for the Phoenix. The fight has begun. Freya pew pewing away with her pixel buster. This tight, this Phoenix, yeah, yeah, the Titan, you have three times. The double second Phoenix is going to go down, and the third. But now Yueling going to look for a Cataclysm, potentially as the Lawbringer gets popped by Zunk. Aimless, Aegis is very nice, but gets hit with the Fearless. In comes the Stormcall plus Recall Demons. Marcel is a very bad spot, gets picked up by Pi Bear. Shockwave coming out there by Yueling. Defender Olympus being channeled here onto Oritual. He used a 50% damage mitigation plus damage. Zonk gets away just in time. Blinks away from the reach passive. Nice play there. And Wheel of Bacon 
basically have the boot on the neck of Phalanx team. They have the Phoenixes down. What can Phalanx do here, Joden? I think they really needed to mount a defense on one of those Phoenixes. It was kind of scattered. The, the, finally, the third Phoenix about to go down. They said, okay, we're gonna, it, it fell. Let's defend now. They kind of just grouped up behind the Phoenix, didn't really go forward, tried to zone anyone out, and they just let everyone attack. Zao caught out by those back harpies. Oh. That's, he's just going to get burst down and out quickly. Gotta really be careful about those movements forward in the jungle when you don't have any vision at all. We see sentry wards everywhere right now on that left side jungle for We Love Bacon. So, no chance for vision right there. Your titan. Do we touch, yeah. We're touching the Phoenixes. The Phoenixes are all down as Fire Minions swarming down all three lanes right now. The right Phoenix is going to respawn shortly, but so is the Fire Giant. The, I don't know, it's going to be a couple waves of Fire Minions still heading down that lane when the Fire Giant comes up. Yeah. And the, they had to be careful of these Fire Minions going onto the Titan, because as we've seen before, the Fire Minions can do deceptive amounts of damage to a Titan in a very quick manner. So, if they're not careful, we could be seeing... A potential backdoor coming out of, say, Hunbat having an Athena travel to him, then have Orange Troll quickly come with a teleport as well. Things can get problematic when your Phoenixes come down, but Phalanx team turtling up, doing the best thing. Although, Zonk does have to be careful, he doesn't get picked up here because. Right, I mean, he did get picked up before, and it uh, looks like he does have learned his lesson. I like the fact that Phalanx team is warding very defensively here, keeping the back harpies and the respective buffs actually lit up. Mm -hmm. But we love, he can just have complete map control right now, Joden. Yeah, definitely, especially with the fire giant buff in their hand once again. They could potentially look to take this Phoenix out, and they are looking like they're going to go for it. It's weakened, it has reduced health, it's going to drop very, very quickly here. This is uh, one of two opportunities really for Phalanx team to mount the defense. The Phoenix dropped instantly, so any chance of that is now at the table. Fire minions are pushed back a good way in the left lane right now. They're about neutral in the wave. Middle lane though, they are approaching right lane, they are making it through to the Titan. Titan's all that's left standing. They have about 45 seconds on that left Phoenix. Phalanx team needs to stay and defend. We Love Bacon needs to wait for a proper opportunity to go in. They could just look to slowly whittle down that Titan as well, depending if they, as long as they don't reset it too frequently, it'll take damage slowly over time, but Yurling getting caught, as well as Marcel's in a double taunt. Fear no evil, that's Yurling down before he can even ult. Cypher's getting picked up as well by Nan. Defender of is coming down into the back, onto the Titan. Oh. Looks like We Love Bacon not looking, gonna look for the kills. Gonna yeah. look for the Titan directly. Gonna clean that one up as the ghosties from Jean Cui escape. Very escapey! Little, uh, little trap on his back. Little demon bag. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, the ghosts have escaped, and so has apparently the Titan's life bar has drained away. As that is gonna be GG well played to Wheel of Bacon. They're gonna be winning round one. I believe this is best of three as well. Every yep. match is gonna be best of three. And at least for that. Round one, very nicely done there by... That was a hard Wheel of Bacon, using good use of the jungle, the warding, and the global presence. I like their comp that they that they actually picked. Or the Athena come out. They made good use of it. And Keck even managed to get some good farm going as well on the Hunter Freya. So I wonder how Felix Ting will actually adjust to this accordingly. One of the big things I noticed a little bit was just the kind of lack of cohesion from the team. There's a little bit, well, would we want to fend here? We should be defending this Phoenix, but, well, we don't really want to be too aggressive in our defense. It looked like there's a little bit of indecision as far as exactly what to be doing towards the end of defending those Phoenixes. Yeah, you're behind, but if you let all those Phoenixes drop, as we mentioned, those Fire Minions hurt the Titan quite badly. If you have all three Phoenixes down, you really cannot leave your base anymore. You give the fire, next Fire Giant up for free. And it all just kind of crumbles from there on out as your defense just kind of crumbles. They get the fire giant buff and they can just, as we saw, just wait for the perfect opportunity, find it, go aggressive, and then take your titan out. Yeah. So in the end, that will be... Uh, I have the memory of a goldfish. We love bacon. There we go. It'll be, I just remember as the team that should be under Mez's ownership. We have we love bacon going to be taking round one in this best of three. Unless you got any other thing else, Shodan. Nope. We can cut to break and get the next match going. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that, guys. Stick around. Enjoy the music. We'll, we will be back soon.